Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today we're really going to dive into work from home success strategies, Amazon FBA style. Now, I know that this is different for those who are maybe working from home um, remotely from an office job or some some other uh, way that you work from home, but this is specifically these strategies really work for anyone that's working from home um, and specifically talking about Amazon and things like that today. We know that this is not your typical work from home to where there's no boss. There's nobody coming to you saying you have to be at meetings at certain times or you have to do this or have to do that. This is the entrepreneur's guide really to working from home and how to become more successful because the more that we do this, Let's be honest, there's lots of distractions. There's a lot of things that really get in our way of our uh, productivity, about our business growing, about things, all the things that we want to and need to do. And there's a lot of things that get in the way of that. And I have been doing some digging into my own life and my own business and my own time and realizing that I do have a lot more time than I think I do when I am prioritizing what I'm doing first, second, and third, what goals I'm working on. And when I'm not doing that, I feel chaotic, out of control, all over the place, not getting anything done, majorly stressed. Are these anything, anything you've ever felt like that? Because you know what, honestly... Once you know yourself and the way that you work and the way that you work the best, that's when you need to tap into those specific resources the most. So knowing yourself and knowing exactly what distracts you, what um, keeps you motivated, keeps you inspired, all those different things. Combine those. I want you to be thinking about these things while we're talking, while I'm talking about these different strategies that we're going to go through because Honestly, I've tried all of these and realized how important it is to set yourself up for success. Like it do, these things don't just happen, y'all. They, you don't just see somebody's final product or final um, idea like out on Instagram somewhere. And that is the final production quality of something, right? But when we're working in our business day to day to day, there are things that happen, quote unquote, behind the scenes that people aren't used to, right? They, they don't, you're not used to seeing those things. So if we wanted to dig deep or peek behind the curtain to be like, how can people be so successful, not only on Amazon, but also working from home or as an entrepreneur, there are certain qualities. There are certain things that people do every single day, success strategies, if you will, to, to get things done. I mean, if you're always running around like your hair's on fire, like there's the chicken with the head cut off kind of thing, then there's some things that t- that today's episode would really help you do, even if you just narrow in on one of them. And one of the things that that I really want to talk about throughout today, too, is that this business, Amazon FBA, e-commerce, entrepreneurship in general, can get very lonely because not everybody understands what you're going through. Not everybody can relate to being an entrepreneur. Not everybody can relate to what you do from day to day and try to understand that. Um, our spouses, our partners, our, our who, people around us, they might just not get it. And that's okay. We can't fault them for that because they're not in the mix. They're not doing what we're doing every single day to make ends meet, to grow our business, to make things work. So let's give them a little bit of grace for that too. But also we need to find those people that understand us. They understand what we're going through, what we're facing every single day. When you say, oh, I had to contact Seller Central, your Amazon people want to give you a hug already. They already know what that entails and what that means. They already know the stress that you're probably feeling from that just by reaching out to Seller Central. That means, number one, you had a problem you had to solve. And number two, they probably didn't solve it in a fast or easy manner or it's still ongoing. So we all know and we speak each other's language, right? We understand each other. So this this business can get very isolating and lonely specifically with Amazon because it's not just being another entrepreneur. It's being an entrepreneur that works exclusively virtually and generally there's no one to talk to about the things that you want to talk about. Um, and so there's not scheduled meetings. There's not a boss telling you what to do. It really 
feels isolating. So I want to go through some of the things that you can do. Number one, to set yourself up for success. And even if you're an introvert and you're not a big people person, we all have that longing to belong to something, to have people understand what we're going through, understand how to help and resolve problems and share ideas and places like that. A non-intimidating place where you can come and just be yourself, to be honest, to vent, but also to ask for help, to ask for opinions, to get ideas, to just kind of put some things out there. And yes, venting and, and expressing your frustrations and how to get problem solved is also a very safe thing to do and should be welcomed. So this is the kind of stuff we're talking about here and talking about how we can succeed even without that. Because even our introverted friends who don't need people all the time um, still can feel that same sense of isolation isolation or that same sense of lack of understanding from people because we all have friends, right? We all have friends, people, family in our lives that if they don't, if they've never owned a business, if they've never run a business, if they've always just worked at a job that someone told them what to do and they can punch in and punch out or just go and do their job, it's a whole different ball of wax then to run your own business and have to take responsibility for every success and every failure to be self-motivated enough to get up, get things done, make, actually make money and continue to make it work. It's such a different environment. And so we all have people in our lives that don't, really get it and that's okay but we have to connect with people that do because when we have people that understand us when we have people that can relate and can kind of laugh through some of the struggles together and also um, help each other with that that is such a different sense of motivation and inspiration to keep moving when you know you're not alone in this journey and I want you all to know that you're not alone in this journey not just from me, there's tons of different communities and Facebook, and we'll get into that in a little bit. But the reality is, though, that when you feel truly understood, it, there's, there's so much inspiration and motivation that comes from that knowing that, hey, if these people can do it, if this person can do it, if, this, if these people can get over these obstacles and solve these problems and get through it, so can I. It creates that feeling of the rising tide raises all ships, right? So if we're all in the same water and the water is all going up, then we're all succeeding. And that's part of what community does is really bring people together. So I'm going to talk a little bit today about some of these things that you can do to help yourself become a little bit more successful while working from home, while being an entrepreneur, while being in an e-commerce and how you can get a little bit more connected, but also just how you can feel more successful and productive at the end of every day for yourself, for knowing that working from home is way harder than people make it out to be. Everyone has, there's people that don't do it, that don't have any clue what it's like to be constantly distracted by everything around you and having to pull yourself back in. It's not an easy task to work from home. So any of you guys have been working um, from home for or being entrepreneurs at all, you already have succeeded far beyond what most people do because most people don't have the stomach to um, start a business to begin with. So congrats on that. But then let's not only start a business, but finish one or complete one or grow one or whatever it is the stage that you're at right now. I want you to feel supported, not isolated. I want you to feel like you can conquer the world because there is people there are people to reach out to. There are people to talk to and there are solutions to put into place so that you can become more successful because y'all know I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be up uh, upfront. I'm going to be vulnerable. I'm going to be transparent. I never have nor ever will tell you that this entrepreneurship journey is the easy road because it's really not. It's not the easy road. There is no easy road. There's always stressful, hard days, all things that we're going to go through on a regular basis, um, no matter what you're facing, whether you have your own job or whether you are an entrepreneur, it doesn't really matter. There isn't an easy road. So if you've been chasing the easy road, this is permission to get off the crazy train because there isn't one. There just isn't. Now, things get easier as you grow. Things get easier as you learn things and put processes in place and hire people and all that sort of thing. So eventually, yes, there is an easy road. 
but there's no shortcut to that road. You have to take the hard road before you get to the easy road. It's at the end of the hard road. So there's only one way to get there. Time, patience, consistency, support, community, help, coaching, uh, education. Yeah, those are all things that are going to eventually lead to that easier road. But right now, we're still on the hard road. And that's okay, too. We just have to figure out how to navigate those obstacles in our way so that we continue to the road that gets easier. All of the debris that's in our way, the obstacles and things like that at the beginning of a business, um, start to get pushed out of the way as we learn and grow. So hang in there and know that it's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worth it. And so let's learn some of these strategies. So one of the first and best things I ever learned about working from home is pretend like you're going to a job. Pretend mentally until you get into the major habit of it that you're going to get up every single day you're gonna take a shower you're gonna get your however your morning routine goes if you don't have one it's time to create one right and I don't mean like the 5 a.m you have to meditate and take a cold shower and all these other crazy things that are circling around which if that's you great like not judging just like (laughs) cold showers are not for me just saying But like having a specific time where you start work. So whether that's a natural time, whether your kids get on the bus at a certain time and you can work after that, or you're just maybe not a morning person and so you're up and around more at 10 a.m. than 7 a.m., whatever works for you. But set a routine and set an intention, a time where you start every day. Because most people's lives are built around routines. We don't generally have the most flexible thing day to day to day. We all have routines or schedules or things that we do on a regular basis. And so we rely on those to keep moving. So set your intentions and pretend like you're going to the office. I heard this someplace I can't even remember, but it was like, get dressed down to your shoes every single day because that's intentional. That means I'm going places. I'm moving. I need to put on my shoes means I'm not staying put. I'm going to be on the move, right? At at some point. Now we don't really wear shoes in our house. So it's one of the, when you're putting on your shoes, it usually means you're going someplace because the shoes go at the door when you come in and out, right? So getting dressed, getting ready, getting to the point where you're going to mentally get in your car and make that commute to your office. Now for me, it's making the commute up the stairs, down the hall and to my office. So that's my commute, but I get fully ready and fully dressed every single day. It's time to start work. It's time to get here. And so this is, that's part of your routine. So if you're struggling to even get started or, you know, you kind of stumble into your office at whatever time or your, your workspace or open your computer or wherever it is, then that's not really intentional, which is my next kind of tip for you to have really good, successful work at home habits, right? Is starting at the same time, getting dressed, getting ready to go to the office, but then you're in the office. So now what? So as, as entrepreneurs, as business owners, as Amazon sellers, even we don't have anybody giving us a task list of here's the things that you need to do. And here's the deadlines for those things. So structuring your day as if you're going to a nine to five kind of job will really help you to set intentions and know exactly what you're doing. Being intentional about planning your tasks and other things throughout your day to structure your day really will help you flow through the day rather than being flexible and willy-nilly. And y'all, I am a flexible, willy-nilly kind of person. So this is not me telling y'all all the things that you should do or have to do. This is really just me learning how I was able to become more successful and get more done in a lot less time than what I used to do. And my personality doesn't love a very structured, scheduled, down to the minute kind of schedule. I like to be a little bit more flexible. I like to build in flexible time to where it's like, sometimes creative tasks just can't be planned. You have to be able to say, well, I kind of want to do this task around this time. But if you're not in the right kind of creative mood, that's going to hinder your progress. But if you set yourself up ahead of time to to create that kind of environment that allows you to be very creative in certain moments, then you're already pre-planning your um, your success. But knowing what I need in order to be creative, and I'll give you an example, I need 
motivation in a different way to, in order to be creative, in order to sit down and write like a blog post or write an outline for a wonderful podcast like this one. I have to be really inspired by something. And sometimes I'm just inspired by putting my headphones in and taking a walk in a beautiful, not really in the winter, but um, in a beautiful setting, whether it's spring or summer or something like that, where I can be in nature and hear birds and hear and see flowers or green grass or anything like that helps me to reorient myself around just nature and what what's motivating for that. And usually when I come back from a walk, I feel energized and I feel ready to tackle the next task. So when I say structure your day um, according to those types of things, I mean structure your day to have breaks and a lunch break and maybe even a 15 minute walk if that's something that really helps you to get off your behind and kind of move your body around a, a little bit. I'm not saying you have to go huff and puff and take a, a, a three mile run, but whatever you feel like motivates you, maybe it's music and maybe music and creativity don't go hand in hand for you. If they do, then figuring out a motivational playlist is something that you can do to help kickstart what you're doing. Is there that song that you can play that you just can't sit down when that song is on? You just have to be moving and wiggling around. Well, maybe you plan for a break and you put that song on and you can get up and do some other things. Maybe it's a 15 minute chore that you want to do something that you can plan ahead to be like, I need breaks throughout the day. Otherwise I can't get anything done. I find out when I work for too long, I just start opening tabs that don't need to be open and start, I, I'm distracted and I'm kind of putting the hard work off and I'm doing these little tasks. So I'm sort of making progress, but it's not the right progress. So structure your day like you would in the office. Give yourself office hours. So no matter what that is for, we all have a different life. We all have different things that we're going out, but I'll give you my perspective. So my daughter, every single Monday through Friday, gets on the bus at 8.30. She gets on the bus at 8.30. So I know that I have from 8.35 until she gets off the bus at 10 after 4. That's my work day. That can be my work day. So she goes to the bus, 8.30, I'm home by 8.35, and I have from 8.35 until 4.05 when I have to leave to go get her from the bus. That is my work day. That is a natural work day that I can work within most days, most times, Monday through Friday, that can be it. And so I have this chunk of time to work with. Now your chunk of time might be different. It might be shorter. It might be longer. It might not have a uh, naturally built in milestone throughout the day where somebody's coming or going or certain events happen. Maybe it's you wake up because you have to take the dogs out and that's kind of how your day starts. Whatever that is for you, give yourself a structure for that day. Now for every day, if you need to, um, and it doesn't always have to look the same, but having a structure of, I generally do these tasks from nine until 12, and I take a lunch break from 12 until one, and then from one to four, I do these, or one to three, I do these tasks and then finish my day between three and four, where kind of wrap up, plan for the next day, and close the office. So what, what does that look like for you? And what are the things that need to fit into that? Do you have meetings? Do you have phone calls that you need to make? Do you need to, do you have some webinars planned where you need to watch certain training or you've got to go in and do some research, whatever it is that you're doing, look at your schedule at a whole, at a glance and look at how you can make those natural rhythms and natural patterns and structure it and give it a try. Just structure it, be like, okay, from this time to this time, this is what I do. From this time to this time is what I do. And try it for a couple of weeks and see how it really helps you. Because I think having your intentions set, intentionally planning breaks, intentionally planning um, that afternoon walk in order to pick you up. So instead of, you know, maybe you take your afternoon walk and you walk to Starbucks and get that, you know, double mocha latte frappe, whatever it is that you get and walk back to the house and like know that you're there. So um, structuring all of these things as if you're working at an office will really help you because I, I know I used to be the one. I was the one. I was the one that was like, forget that scheduling and structuring stuff. If I wanted that, I would go to a real job. Um, yeah, I lived like that for far too long. 
and then realize that no matter whether you're a real job or you I say real job because a lot of people mock that what we do sometimes let's just be real are you still doing that ebay amazon like online selling thing as if it's not a real job but whatever we that's a whole nother episode um, but this specifically is structuring it in a way that you can get things done there's a reason why people have days and structures and times and you know tasks that they need to be doing and there's break times and there's lunch times and all that stuff I mean if you're all on anything like me I will would work for probably five hours straight before I even think oh maybe I should have a meal maybe I should get out of this chair and do something else besides sit you know moving around stretching anything so I tend to be like that I could be that focused if I need to be and that's not good for my body for my circulation for my mental health for my anything so structuring those and making a plan based on those schedules and then setting reminders and tasks is something that has really helped me to be I would say a hundred percent more productive probably in the last two years because I have had to be more disciplined about my time, about my distractions, about my um, getting things done. Because when you don't, your bottom line will suffer. Nobody else is going to come and clean up my messes that I'm making. No one else is going to stand over me and say, hey, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. It just has consequences if it's not done. And I don't realize those until a little bit later. So structuring that day, structuring it somewhat, somewhat flexible to where it's like, these are the things I need to get done. And this can be pushed to here if I don't do this, but also gives me a little bit of personal accountability. So I also, because of the flexible schedule that we have here, tend to want to procrastinate and do any other thing than the one thing that I need to do. And my mind wants to be like, oh, well, you have a little bit of time here. You can do it then and do this then. So if you've ever done that and you've ever been a victim of your own procrastination, um, if you haven't, you're probably lying. So just so you know, <laughs> uh, all jokes aside, I, I literally am, can be the queen of procrastination. I put the pro in procrastination, right? Um, so I'm learning to not do that by literally just plugging in a task. When uh, Maureen and I have meetings every single week, and when we have a meeting, um, we have these tasks that we've got to get done, and she handles her task list the way she handles hers, and I handle mine by putting it on the calendar that day. So if these are things that need to get done, looking at the timeline, put it right there. So being intentional, planning things ahead of time, instead of just getting to it, put it on the calendar. The date will come and it will approach and you're going to need to take care of those things. So being very intentional about planning at least your break times, office hours, how you will do that. So showing up, showing up like you're showing up for work. Even if you have to put on some of those, fan you, you can wear your yoga pants if you want. I, I ain't gonna lie. I like to wear my comfy clothes most of the time. But when you put on those work clothes, you feel like you're in work mode. When I put on my comfy sweats, I feel like I want to sit on the couch. And so I've intentionally been trying to dress for work so that I don't feel like, oh, well, sitting on the couch or chilling out here. You're not in chill mode. You're in work mode, right? Chill mode can come later. Okay, so being structuring your day, planning your day, planning breaks and lunch and at office hours saying, I'm going to start at this time and end at this time and honoring that um, are part of those. Another thing is your workspace. Let's talk about your workspace for just a moment. Now, when I say your workspace, I want you to visualize right now instantly with no judgments what your current workspace looks like. What does it look like? Is it a work environment that you absolutely love going into? And it's like, oh my gosh, this makes me feel inspired and motivated and productive. And I can't wait to get into it. Or is it a hot mess? And I don't mean just like cluttered mess or, you know, something like that. But is it organized? Is it set up in a way that makes you feel like, I've got this, I can conquer the world because I know exactly what I'm doing today and I know exactly where to find everything and everything has a home. <sighs> I take a deep breath there because I really realize that as I'm sitting here in my space, <laughs> it does not feel like that. And these are things, you remember you guys, when I come here, I am not talking at you. I am walking with you. 
I'm walking with you. I tell you guys things that I need to hear and I say out loud to myself and to you because we all need to hear these things because there is no boss coming into my office telling me that this is a mess and there's no way that I'm going to be super productive in an environment like this because there's literally, if y'all could see behind the scenes here, which I will not show you the behind the scenes right now because it's quite embarrassing to be honest. Um, there are piles everywhere of stuff because my office tends to be the, we don't know where this goes and it doesn't have a home. So let's dump it in mom's office. And I do it too. So this is like the, but just put it in my office. Well, guess what? The office is no longer a working space. It's now a workspace and a storage space and a project space and a art project, unfinished business space and a, oh, we don't know where that goes. So shove it under the table kind of space. So even if you do not have a specific dedicated space for your work, you can create one. You can create your boundaries of your space and say nothing goes in this space except for these things. Now, where does that go on the priority list, right? The reason why mine's undone is because I don't see it as a priority until right now, until I'm realizing like how can I be more productive? I am distracted by the beautiful weather that's coming for spring. I am. I'm distracted. When I look out my window and I see, oh my gosh, it's sunny and it's warm and the sun's out. I want to go outside. I don't want to work. But structuring my environment so that I can have the window open and have the breeze coming in and knowing that I have office hours helps me to be less distracted by that and knowing that that's coming later because I've thought about it and planned it out already. So having a calm, comfortable, ready to work space is really important because what we don't realize is that this visual clutter around us, if you have visual clutter anywhere, also hinders our pro productivity. It really hinders the way that we look around, what our eyes are seeing and the distractions of the thoughts that come into my mind. I really need to clean up that corner over there. I need to break down those boxes and take them to the recycle bin. Uh, there's a pile of papers over here that needs to be filed. Uh, I've got to handle this thing over here. All the stuff is pulling at my attention and therefore I'm not working on my business the way I need to work on my business because I'm mentally distracted even if it's for a second. The clutter around you is mental clutter and it will clutter up your mind and it will make you feel things like guilt or shame because you didn't clean that up or how dare you let you get, let it get that bad. Have you had any of those thoughts ever or is it, is, am I just alone here? Um, because these things like literally cause me stress sometimes too like Oh, I really need to get to those papers. Oh, I need to take that thing over there uh, to my grandma's house when I go see her next. I forgot that last time. These are all the things. Choosing a dedicated workspace and office hours will really help you to stay focused and cleaning your workspace. Having, you know, and this is something you can do with a 15 minute hustle. If y'all don't know what a 15 minute hustle is, it is making a master list of all the things that need to be done on a regular basis and then breaking them down and picking one and starting it doesn't mean you have to finish it, but picking one and starting it. And so that could be a 15 minute hustle task. It's like clean up the papers on the right side of the desk. The end. It doesn't even have to be completed at that time. It can just be started. So arranging your space to where you feel calm and comfortable and ready for work will actually, what you feel and what you see will manifest into your work. So manifesting that calm, comfortable, ready to work space will really help you with that. So this is my like accountability for y'all that I am going to work on that for my particular space because I have let it get out of control. And I know that when I walk into my office, I don't want to see a ton of undone tasks and papers and messes. I want to be able to say, oh, this is my workspace. This is where I get to be creative. This is where I get to create things and, and put bundles together. This is where I can create my podcast and record them and do these trainings that I'm doing. This, is, this needs to be part of our happy place, not the stressful place we're trying to avoid. Because if that's the, how you feel when you walk into your office or your dedicated workspace, wherever you have it, then that's a problem. Because you're not, you're going to come into your work with that mindset. So we want to come into our work, work environment in a place that feels calm and comfortable and ready for, ready for the work that we're ready to do. Now, 
another thing about working from home is that we're home. I mean, the other day my daughter was like, Mom, I don't think you've left the house this whole week. And I'm like, I think you're right. I haven't. She's like, your gas tank is still on full and I filled it last week or whatever. Like, I literally like work from home and then I live at home and then I cook at home and then we're at home. And, you know, I think we got all used to that, especially during, you know, that quarantine period and stuff. But I've been working at home for years and years. And it really dawned on me that I don't leave a lot. So last week, um, I had to go over to my mom's house for something and she's out of town. She's, uh, was gone for the week to, um, welcome her 12th grandbaby into the world. And so her house was open and free and I needed to get something from there. She had a catalog that I was working with and needed the actual physical catalog because I love to work with those. And she had it at her house. So I ran over there and I thought, you know what? I'm going to take my laptop. I'm going to take my stuff. I'm just going to work from her house today. There's nobody there. It's quiet. It's a different environment. I can't tell you how much I got done just by not being in my own space, not being in my own office, not being distracted by the noise, the cats, the, you know, people coming and going, the, the, just the stuff around my office that I just even talked about, things that I can even be distracted by the piles sitting over here that need to be cleaned up because I'll end up doing that instead of doing what I need to be doing. So changing your environment, working from home doesn't mean you have to work from home. You can work remotely. And if you're inspired or motivated or just feeling like that, or even if you don't know if you are, try it out. Go to a different place. Now, I've got some great places that are free, that are also usually have Wi-Fi that you can use and will really just help to get you out of your own space. I recommend this at least like once a week or at least every other week of just getting out of your space, even for like a three hour stretch of time and going somewhere that other than your normal dedicated guest bedroom or office or the corner of the kitchen or whatever it is that you work from, changing your environment, going to a place can help because honestly, home is full of distractions. There's other people, there's pets, there's kids, there's chores, there's laundry, there's the Amazon delivery people, there's the neighbors across the street who you see a moving truck there and you didn't know they were moving and so now you're curious and now you're on Facebook and you're looking at whether or not the neighbors are moving and like whatever it is. You guys know how what the distractions are. Those are just like me like talking out loud, but there's so many distractions around us constantly and sometimes it's just the noises and the things that go on around us you know we hear we start a load of laundry and then we hear it beep so we get up out of our chair and we go to the laundry and then we're in the laundry room and then we realize that oh the litter box needs to be cleaned and then you're doing that and then you're taking it outside you go outside to throw that away and then you see oh wow we haven't trimmed the hedges in a while and then the whole day can get away like that literally happens. So sometimes leaving your environment and going to a different remote location in order to work uh, can give you new inspiration too. It can just be, oh, this is just different. I'm, I, I don't have as many distractions. I don't have something to turn to to procrastinate with. I mean, of course, we have the internet. We have YouTube. <laughs> YouTube or Instagram can literally suck the life out of our entire day if we let it. But a couple of suggestions to find some of these places, which of course we know the typical, oh, we can go work at Starbucks or, you know, something like that. But libraries have, and I don't know about the library in your town, city place, but maybe not your library. Maybe it's two towns over and you just you walk into a public library. You don't need to have a library card to walk in. You can go to the library and find a quiet corner. And a lot of times, I don't know about your library, but ours has several rooms where they're just like enclosed soundproof kind of rooms where you can go in, you could have phone calls, you can set up, it's just like a desk and a chair and it's quiet and you can shut the door and you don't have to rent it. You just let them know you're using room B or whatever and it's totally cool. So you can go to someplace like the library, you can go to a coffee house, you can rent a co-working space. There's co-working spaces in every, probably every city, town, place, wherever, desk rental, you know, things like that. Just something for a change. Of course, that takes intention, right? Talking about planning your days and planning out uh, the structure of your day. Maybe this is like every Thursday morning from 9 until 1230, I go to the library and I work there. Or every week, maybe it's a different place. Um, hotel lobbies, believe it or not, or hotels have great, most of them, larger hotels, have 
space you can use for free with free Wi-Fi and you don't even have to rent anything. You can just go there. Uh, um, I remember when Maureen and I were doing a planning meeting and I met her in Cleveland and there's this hotel and we were staying there, but the hotel actually had this second floor that kind of looked out into the city area and had these big, huge, like, tables like you could sit at. It was part of their, it's kind of part of their bar, but it was off to the side. It had a beautiful view, and it was a perfect place to work during the day. There was, like, nobody in there. It was a pretty environment to work at. It was very sunny, and, well, it was just very, lots of natural light and things like that. It wasn't super loud. So those are things like that you can find, like a hotel lobby, or um, a lot of colleges and universities have a lot of what they call these commons areas spaces. So if you live near a college or university um just head over to campus and head to some of their you know a couple of the buildings that they have there's always common areas to work in those environments um a bookstore like barnes and noble or you know places like that always have you know desks and chairs and places to sit where you can just work a public park even now with that use your, your phone as a hot spot or something if you don't have like a mobile uh, wi-fi or whatever even places like Whole Foods have these sections where you can go sit at a table and chairs, maybe get a coffee or a snack and just do some work from someplace else. It really can help jumpstart your productivity because you have nothing else than what you brought. And you can literally just sit down and be like, I am doing this task for this amount of time and however long it takes. So if that's something that you think could help you or you're just maybe uncomfortable, just give it a try and see, oh my, and just test your productivity. How did it work? How did it look for you? How did it feel? If it wasn't something you were comfortable with or you felt like it was just too much work to drag the laptop and the bag and plan all these things, then maybe that's not for you. But giving it a try can really help you um, reinvent what you're doing. And maybe it's just part of your routine now to kind of do that. I know that after going to my mom's and trying that out, I'm going to do that a lot more often because I realize that I am a super home body and I'm here a lot and I go from home to home. <laughs> I just go from my office to the rest of my house. And so I want to be able to uh, get out a little bit more, even if it's um, still by myself and over here in a corner somewhere, it's a different environment, which can bring different motivation and different inspiration and creative ideas that maybe you wouldn't have looking at the same four walls over and over and over again. So don't underestimate the power of changing your environment, even temporarily to re-inspire you to continue moving in the direction that you're moving. Another thing that we can do to have tremendous success while working from home or remotely or at the bookstore or wherever you're working is to really make it difficult for yourself to use social media during these times. And I am constantly accused of this and I, you're welcome. That's what I say to everybody when they say these things. But everyone in my family, including my children, are like, you never answer your phone. You never answer. You don't answer me. If, if any one of you have ever called me or texted me, I'm sorry in advance, or maybe I'm not sorry, <laughs> that I am not available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to everybody in my life, including my own children. There's a reason for that. It's called boundaries. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's not a sexy word that, that, I, that not everybody uses, but it's something that everybody needs. Um, boundaries and boundaries around yourself. Also, because I am a very social person and when someone's like, hey, let's go grab a coffee, let's go to lunch, let's go to breakfast, let's go pretty much anywhere if I'm invited. I want to say yes all of the time. Number one, it involves people in a conversation I'm totally in. Um, the problem with that is I would do that all day long, every day, seven days a week and then never get anything done and go broke and, you know, the story goes. So I have to limit my communications. And part of what I limit my communications is that I assume that nothing is urgent. Nothing's urgent. Now, if someone, t I, I have to, everybody that's in what I call the circle, <laughs> everyone that's in this house, at the very least, knows how to get a hold of me in case of an emergency. There is emergency protocol. So nothing is urgent unless it's urgent, right? And so that those are those are things that we can set in place to be like, if this is the 911 situation, if this is something that's very urgent, they know how to text me in that way or they know how to call me in that way. And I do have certain things on my phone that will allow emergency calls to come through from certain people. But I have learned that 
20 years ago or what, is it even more than that now 25 years ago now or whatever that we didn't have smartphones you couldn't just call someone at work and be like I need you to answer me now or what is this or what is that like when my husband works commercial construction you can't just call him at 10 30 a.m and be like hey babe I need this or that or I have a question or whatever else no working no phone tools in hand not going to be doing you know doing a job cannot answer you until lunchtime like we're conditioned to know that because those are the rules and standards for that job. And so like, or if you, if you're know anybody that's an attorney and they're, you know, in court all day, they, they don't have time to back and forth you on the, on the phones and this and that. Okay. So I've set myself up for this to have people's expectations be that they are not going to get an immediate response from me. And that has to be okay. And if it is urgent, then they need to contact multiple times and let me know that it's urgent and that they need a response in a certain period of time. Um, and that's, that's something that we can practice doing because so far I haven't had anyone had to use that emergency protocol that we set in place. So I already know that right now, my phone's off. My phone is on silent 100% of the time. I would say 99% of the time. There's that 1% of like my husband goes to the store and I turn it on because he's going to call me 10 times be like, do we have this? Do we need this? Do we need that? So there's certain times I'll catch my phone on if I'm waiting for a specific phone call that I have to take or something like that, but it's off. And then I go as far as to say off to put it on airplane mode or put it in a completely different room that I'm in. You know why? Because nothing on Facebook, nothing on Instagram, nothing on Snapchat or TikTok or YouTube or any other thing is urgent. It's not urgent. If it's there now, it will be there in three hours or five hours or at the end of your workday. But if it's urgent, somebody somehow will let you know. Remember back in the day when we couldn't text people, but we wanted to know we had to get a hold of them. It was an emergency. If you had to, you got in your car and drove over to someone's house, knocked on the front door and was like, urgent. I need to speak with you. Um, they, there's, there were times where you couldn't text somebody. You could call. And if they didn't answer, you had to keep calling. You had to keep calling back and you realize at some point they're not there. That's why they're not answering. You know, there is definitely ways to handle emergencies. And I think that we've just thought in our heads that we have to get back to people right away. And part of it's FOMO too, right? We have this FOMO. We have this idea that we're going to miss out on something if we don't handle these things right away. Guess what? Nothing that maybe messages that you've answered, Instagram posts, Facebook, any of the stuff. It's not urgent. Did you miss out on it? No, because nothing is released and then not released another hour from then. So paying attention to what is distracting you and just being honest with yourself. Be honest. How many emergencies have there really been? And were you, did you have to an handle that in that moment? No, nope, it's not urgent. Things are not urgent. So get back to them when you get back to them and be okay with it. To say thank you for your patience, here's your answer. That's it. It's not difficult once you get it done. It's, it was difficult for me to set these boundaries, but it's not difficult to continue them knowing that it frees me up to choose what's urgent rather than having someone else choose on my behalf how I respond to them and how fast. Make it harder for yourself to be distracted by those things, especially by social media. There's nothing on social media that's urgent. It's not urgent. Phone free hours or plan to check things at certain times and give yourself a timeline. Be like, okay, maybe it's the little carrot you dangle at the end of your face. Because you know what? I love social media as much as everyone else. I love to watch the crazy cat videos and the really weird products that come up on my Instagram feed. And oh, don't even get me started on YouTube videos. Like I literally could waste an entire full day just watching entertaining YouTube videos. But we have businesses to run, so we need to set ourselves boundaries. And if there's something that comes along your path, I also have this little pad next to my, next to me right here that's like ideas for later. And when something comes across my path and I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to remember that, I write it on ideas not to forget and then it stays there. It's a pad right here that sits. And so those are things I can't, absolutely can't forget. And if something is urgent, it goes on a sticky note and it goes right here so that I can handle it. Make it harder 
for you to access the things that distract you the most. Also, what this one thing is also majorly overlooked, but it's something that you have to figure out for yourself when you are, when are you the most productive? What, we all have different body rhythms and brain rhythms and routines and things like that. So we don't always get to perform when our optimal performance time is available. Um, so say you're a morning person and you work best from like 6 a.m. to like 9 a.m. Except for, I don't know, you have a newborn baby and they don't conform to your personal timeline. <laughs> um, you know, that would be a distraction. That would be something that you can't handle during that time. So yes, there's outliers. There's things where they don't fit into the schedule. But in the scheduled time that you have to complete your work tasks or your business or whatever that is, of those that time, what is your most productive couple of hours? So for me, I am super productive from 10 a.m. until 1. And then I also hit kind of a stride between like 2.30 and 4.30. So I know that those are some of my most creative, most productive times of day. Specifically, the creation process generally happens in the later afternoon for me when most people are like dying for another cup of coffee and trying to stay awake. I'm like, I'm in the zone. I just hit the zone and realize that I have to be out of the zone because the bus is coming, right? Um, but still, you have to know your own zones to know like, okay, I do my best work from 10 to 12. 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Those are like literally my rock star hours. So when you have your rock star hours, you need to protect that time like it is, you know, your the mama bear protecting its cubs, right? Like those are your most productive hours. No meetings, no chats, no phone. That is the best time you come up with your best ideas and you can execute them and that you just feel unstoppable. Everybody has those times of day when they just feel super energized, super motivated, getting stuff done. Capture those moments like it is the only hours that you have in the day. Because if you, you can do more in those two hours in your, what I call your zone, um, I don't know if there's like real words for this out in psychology somewhere. I don't know what they are, but like I have figured out that my body rhythm, my brain rhythm and how I'm creative and how I'm motivated really has some time, like your time zones. And my time zones really are that um, mid morning time and then that mid afternoon time. And part, part of that is that I get some activity in between that, um, whether it's uh, getting up here and do, doing some chores or like like when I eat my lunch sometimes I sit most of the day and so I'm intentional about moving when I'm not sitting and that also gets me motivated because your your blood gets pumping a little bit you get moving you get it, it sparks serotonin in your brain it releases those feel good chemicals and when you feel good you feel you don't feel stressed you don't feel all those things then you can actually feel super motivated to move through to the next task so Find your zones and work within those zones and protect those zones. And if you have small children and your zones are, you know, during that time, maybe it's time to consider a babysitter or um, grandparents to come over and, and help out during those specific zone times where you're like, oh my gosh, I do my best work from, you know, 10 to 1. Um, getting a babysitter from 10 to 1 might actually help you be the most productive you can be. And you might not have to work the rest of the day. You might just get enough done in those three hours because those are the only three hours you have and they're your best hours of the day. Um, protect that time. Ask for it. Ask for help or, or plan your life to structure around your zone of the most energy, the most um, awake and available you are to do business tasks. Use those hours properly. Staying connected is really helpful too when it comes to all this stuff. So we're planning our days. We're getting ready. We're removing distractions or maybe moving our environment to go somewhere else maybe once or twice a week um, or working in our creative and motivated and energizing zone to get the most done in those hours now it's about the planning it's about using technology and using digital things to not only stay connected but stay productive planning out what you're going to be working on oh I always hated that but how I do it, and now I'm so glad I do it. When I sit down to my in, into my chair every day, I know what's coming because I put it there. I know what's on the schedule. I know what I'm doing. I know what tasks I'm doing. I know what I'm recording. I know what I'm researching. I know what I'm what vendors I'm reaching out to because yesterday at the end of my day, 
I wrote that stuff down for today. It literally took five minutes. But what I didn't get done, I looked at it and realized, what are these priorities? What are these priorities from today that didn't get done that still need to be done tomorrow? Because guess what? I'm not going to work two more extra hours today to get them done because I have office hours, because I have a life outside of work. Even though I'm an entrepreneur, I still have office hours because there needs to be a time where you're going to be done. Because guess what? It, you could potentially work 24 seven because there's always something to do. There will always be another to-do list. There will always be more tasks. There will always need things that need more doing all the time. So setting those boundaries for yourself helps you to be like, okay, what I didn't get done today, what are the priorities? Are these still priorities? And what is the first thing I'm going to start on tomorrow? What am I going to do in the afternoon? What am I going to do in my zone hours? All those types of things written down so that tomorrow there isn't a, oh, what was I doing? What am I distracted by? And oh, there's a cat video. And oh, this is going on. Oh, so-and-so is having a webinar today. And not knowing what you're doing can hinder all of your progress. So finishing your date like that and using the technology too that we have to be able to stay connected. That's another thing that, that we need, that we're talking about this being isolating and it's all the responsibilities on us because there isn't going to be a boss having these leadership meetings where we sit here and talk about how we can you know, lead the team. No, you're the team. You're the boss, you're the janitor and the CEO. So you have to self-regulate. And this is part of doing that and doing yourself a favor by planning a little bit. And if you're not good at planning, then plan a day where you can plan. Because that's what I have to do. I'm not very good at planning ahead. There's some people that have like those planners that are like all the all of 2022 is already planned out for them. And they know this and they know this and they know this. That's not how I roll. I'm lucky to have my plan for tomorrow. But I plan for tomorrow because I realize that if I don't, I'm that person. I'm going to be that person. It's like, oh, I'm watching this. I'm doing this. I'm at that. Oh, that looks fun. Oh, I'm going to have some FOMO. So I better go check that out. And pretty soon I've done tasks all day and none of them are moving me towards my goals. None of them. I've been busy all day, but guess what? Busiest woman of the year is not an award that I want. I don't want that award. Productive, successful, peaceful, um, happy with progress. That's what I'd like to have. But busiest woman of the year, not an award I want. So I'm going to try to be less busy, but more productive in the hours that I have. Now, talking about the isolation and talking about the feeling isolated during these business, during this business and working from home, these are the strategies that will help you be productive. But the last and final thing is being in community, having a healthy balance of understanding. Now, the more we have control over our environment, the happier and healthier we're going to be. But even in a sense where we don't, we still have ways that we can gird ourselves up and protect ourselves and support ourselves in ways that um, maybe are untraditional. Like when you go to an office, there's naturally people there. And whether you're a people person or whether you're not, there's always someone you can reach out to, talk to, walk to the next cubicle, whatever else, and have conversations. And there's a break room, there's a lunch room, there's a something there that will can help people to at least have a conversation or, hey, Sandy, what do you think about this idea? What do you think about that? We don't have that in our virtual world unless we create it. Community is everything. We need answers. We need support. We need help. We need a place to vent. We need a place where we know we can come and like this person understands the struggle that I'm going through or this person understands the challenges that I'm facing in my business every single day. We need belonging. We we need people. Even as in, if even if you're an introvert, you still need people to bounce ideas off of um, whether it's validation, whether it's um you know, just checking with, you know, you don't know what you don't know, and maybe so-and-so is an expert on something and you're not, and just kind of collaborating. We don't need that 24-7, but we still, we still need that sense of community and belonging, and a place where we can go that we're like, wow, these people understand me. They understand what I'm going through. They understand my struggles. They understand my successes. Like, nobody else on the planet understands that first sale on Amazon happy dance that you do when you've created a bundle and you put all the work in to put it out onto Amazon and then someone buys it. Like your friends that they don't understand that. 
they don't understand that kind of joy. They don't understand how hard you've worked in order to get that there. Maybe some of them do. But other Amazon sellers, other bundlers, other researchers know. I know how much work it took to, for you to get to that point. And so I understand your joy that's in relationship to that first sale, right? So there's that's the kind of community we need. And also the kind of community that we need, like I'm pulling my hair out and hitting my head against the wall because Amazon is being stubborn and won't accept my documents or won't accept my images for my brand registry or whatever it is that they're doing that's stupid today. Um, we get it. We can put our arm around you and be like, let's go have a beer. I totally understand what you're saying. Or we can give you a virtual hug and we can be like, yes, hang in there. Here's what's worked for me when I've been in the situation. There's nothing like feeling like you belong to something that people understand you. They understand your struggles. You understand what you've been through and they're there to help and support you. Not so that you can stay comfortable and stay complaining and just be like, wah, 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 wah with me. Not that kind of support. And not that kind of understanding. Because yes, we need that. We need a hug. And then sometimes we need a slug. That's what I call the hug and the slug. It's like, I love you enough to help you snap out of whatever you're in. That kind of a community. And using the technology to be able to get connected. Now for our extroverted people, they're like all over this. We're like, let's find a local meetup. You know, looking at meetup.com or meetup, meet I think it's meetup.com, where you can find local e-commerce sellers or even entrepreneur events. Not necessarily networking. I didn't say networking, mind you. Um, now I'm not against networking at all, so don't hear what I'm not saying, but I'm talking about looking for local meetups in your area that are e-commerce sellers. Now, yeah, it's been COVID for the last couple of years. And so it's been really difficult to try to navigate in-person type things, but things are coming back to in-person. And if that's not something you're comfortable with and looking for virtual meetings, virtual masterminds, virtual hangouts where people are just talking, not a webinar style, but literally just places where people are gathering and talking. We do this in the Amazon Files Hub. Um, community is everything. And when we need our answers and we need understanding and we need an event and we need to do all that, we have a place where Amazon sellers can belong. It's in the Amazon Files Hub community. And we do coaching calls and goal setting roundtables where people are on camera and they're setting their goals and they're admitting things that went well and things that didn't go well and how they can help improve. Um, you know, there's additional advanced training in there as well. There's special guests that come on and teach specific um, programs and specific uh, softwares and, and help through some of the challenges of that. It's a place where you can come and celebrate your wins and also discuss your, your challenges and vent and say, I have about had it with Amazon. I'm ready to throw my laptop out the window. And we can kind of talk you off the ledge and, and share our ideas about how we're helping. Sometimes it just want to have conversation with other people who understand going to events. I know that Prosper just ended recently and a lot, hundreds and hundreds of people, Amazon sellers and e-commerce sellers alike converge on, in Las Vegas and um, they they go to trainings and they see software programs and they have uh, vendors they can talk to and things that solutions to their business woes and all that kind of stuff. It's a place to just gather and have conversation. So if that's something you're thinking that you need, the Amazon Files Hub is a place where we do that. It's uh, exclusive and private, of course. It's where I hang out the most and we celebrate our wins and we're talking about challenges. And that's something that I would love for you to be a part of so that you can feel connected and feel a sense of belonging and also like how do I get over these hurdles? How do I get additional help? Um, we do this virtually and I'd love for you to be able to join us mommyincome.com slash hub will give you more information about our membership group. And this is only open to Wholesale Bundle students. So if you are not a current student of the Wholesale Bundle system, then there's a special offer on the page for you there. So mommyincome.com slash hub. This is going to get you um, more information about our membership site and about our community that we have. We have exclusive events in there, things that are not advertised on email, not advertised on social. social. They're not on this podcast. We are just in a club over here talking uh, to one another and having some of these events and some of these chats. Sometimes it's just, hey, I'm here. I need to discuss Amazon. Whoever wants to jump on with me live can jump on with me live. We'll talk about it for a little bit and, you know, it's over, you know. So there's things like that, just places where you can come and just have conversation and vent a little bit, but also get some help, give some help. Um, and be supported because you don't have to be alone in this journey. You don't have to be alone when being an entrepreneur. 
you have people to talk to and places that you can connect and there's some great people in the hub and that's places where you can also get connected not just for a group setting but reaching out to someone and saying hey I would love to be accountability partners I'd love to meet with you once a week if you really um, connect with somebody or maybe you find somebody that's in your local area and you could actually meet in person and do your Amazon work how often how awesome would that be so getting connected. You do not have to be isolated. You do not have to do all of this alone because you know what? When we get a good idea or a bad idea stuck in our head, it's stuck in our head. And the best way to unravel some of those thoughts is to say them out loud, to write them out loud, to go somewhere to someone and say, look, I know I sound like I'm crazy here, but what do you think of this? What do you think of that? And asking the right people will also help you. People that understand, people that know what you're going through, understand Amazon, understand e-commerce, understand entrepreneurship, finding your people. And I want to make sure that you understand that we have a group there that's ready to support you. So briefly just going over this again, pick one of these things today to work on. One of them, maybe it's um, cleaning up your space because that's one of the things I'm going to do. But I'm also going to once a week get out of the house, go work somewhere else and just be inspired and be moved regardless of the weather. I'm going to plan this out. So with that being said, that's what I'm going to be doing. What are you going to do? What are you going to do to, to make yourself a little bit more successful, a little bit more productive, and a little bit more connected? So I hope to see you in the in the Amazon Files Hub, mommyincome.com slash hub to learn more about that. And also don't forget your code word for this week if you're interested in joining the Facebook community that we have. Not the membership site, but just our free Facebook community. If you've got questions, if you're not connected to another Facebook community, um, mommyincome.com slash join us. Code word is isolation. And now you have a code word. Don't say I didn't give you one. And we hope to see you in the Facebook group there or in the hub. And I know you guys, you could be anywhere else doing any other thing right now, listening to any other person uh, ramble on, I suppose, about all these crazy things. I hope you learned something. I hope you gained some value. If you did, please be sure to subscribe. Please be sure to leave a review. It literally takes 30 seconds. You could be like, I love this podcast. That could be your your review. <laughs> could be, I hate this podcast too. <laughs> Please don't leave that one as a review. I'd probably cry. Um, not really. But honestly, you guys, like leave a review. Let, let iTunes or Spotify or wh wherever you listen know that you love the Amazon Files. I know y'all could be anywhere else doing any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.